Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is fellow citizens of the household of God, Monday morning espresso shot. I pray that you're in a place of reception, that you're in a place to hear God's word and desires for your life this morning to catapult you into greater works this week that you will be able to accomplish, you will be able to flow through with ease. You've got to come into the word of God with an expectation that God's way is better, that God's way is the delivering way, that God's way is the way you're supposed to be going. We're going to open up with a word of prayer and then go right into the thought for this morning. So please join me. Uh, if you have a moment, grab pen, paper, and your Bibles. That way you can take notes, go back, revisit them, and find uh, such pleasure in the word of God. Good morning, Yolanda. God bless you. Love you. Listen, let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. God, we ask you for forgiveness of all sin, sins of the mind, the body, and the spirit. God, make us ready for your use. God, forgive us of our thoughts. For, hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. Forgive us of our desires that are against your will for our lives. God, clean us, wash us in the blood of the lamb that we may be use for you, meat for your table. God, we, your people, submit to your will and your way, your authority. God, take control, for we know only through you shall we obtain the victory in Jesus' name. God, touch and anoint the ears of the hearers that they may hear your instruction for their lives. Then, God, anoint my mouth that I may speak only what you've said. God, in Jesus' name, may your word, may your way, may your anointing, may your environment prevail. Even now, in Jesus' name, we pray. Those who agree, say amen. God bless you and good morning. The word for today is two simple words. <clears throat> Let go. I know it is preached in many different ways. I myself have preached it before. But I will remind the people of God of this one important factor. God would not have us ignorant. But. He said, wisdom is the principal thing to get. But in all you're getting, get an understanding. Understand how to use the wisdom you receive. So please allow the spirit of God to explain to you what he means by letting go. Oftentimes we hold to things in our lives that we feel we have the solution for. God says not so. For I am at work moving things in the atmosphere that you have no clue of. So whenever you begin to assume responsibility for things that are transpiring in your life, you literally get in the way of God accomplishing what he desires concerning you. You're the obstacle. You're the hurdle, your, your mind, your thoughts, your, your, your thinking that you can figure this thing out quicker than God. God, it takes you too long. God, you, uh, I give something to you today. I expect an answer today. Well, God is not a microwave that you can just order around. God is not, uh, uh, God is God. He's not your equal. You can't sit there and just tell him what to do. So in going forward in the application of things that we are confronted with in life each and every day, this is something that God has given for us to be able to obtain the victory through him. And it is to let go. When you let go, God says, I will hold on. I will take over. Let's go to the word of God. Habakkuk. Chapter 3, verse 18 through 19. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Now, 
I, I stop there because I love it when God uses the word salvation. So many people narrow that word to just meaning Jesus dying on the cross, forgiving sins, and opening up a line of relationship with God. Salvation is complete. Salvation is healing. Salvation is pr uh, uh, prosperity. Salvation is uh, 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 it's sustaining. Salvation. salvation is complete. Stop limiting salvation to just one focus. And understand the salvation of God is all-encompassing, able to accomplish everything that you lay to God's hand to do. What does that look like? That means you surrender and let go of everything. Listen, you're not letting go to do nothing. You're letting go so something can be done. Please understand that you're not letting go to do nothing. No, you're letting go so something can get done. Let's read the second verse. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. If you will look at the hinds feet of the goat that travels on the side of cliffs, he's able to stay in real high places on real small rocks, on cliffs that are almost at a 90. Y'all look it up. Goat, and dwell, goat dwelling, mountain goat, mountain dwelling goats. There you go. Tongue twister. And he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon. Now, the word God uses here is mine high places. So these high places were already assigned to me. These high places were given to me before the obstacle before me came. So God will make my feet, my life, my mind. My actions, hear me now, adapt to the terrain that I must travel in order to be or to abide in the high places that God has already ordained for my life. Listen, God will adapt my life, my mind. When he says my feet, he's talking about ad adaptation to be able to, to survive, to thrive, to prosper in the environment that he puts us in that has already been assigned to our lives. We were already assigned high places. So then he gets us ready to abide in those places. People of God understand what God's desires are for us. He says, I know my thoughts towards you, thoughts of peace and not of war. God desires great things for his people. We're so busy thinking that we can figure things out, that we leave God out of the picture. And all he's sitting there on his throne is and doing is saying, let go. <sighs> let it go. I got it. I sent my son to the cross to bear the load that you are trying to carry. And it is too heavy for you. Let go. I got it. Even when you feel like you're gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to have something happen, and you feel like you need to manipulate or you need to call and you need to do, God is simply let go. Let go. You go to work each and every day dealing with someone, and He's simply telling you, let go. Let go. Why let go, God? Because I can do greater with what you let go of than you can holding on to it. <sighs> I'll say it again. God says, the reason for you to let go is because I can do greater with what you let go of than you can holding on to it. It's not that you let go to do nothing. When he told me that, I, I loved it. And he said, you're letting go so something can be done. It doesn't make sense to the human mind to let go or to not be a participant in something that gets accomplished. But it makes perfect sense to a spiritual mind because not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. 
It ain't going to be by your power or your might that this gets done. It'll be by my spirit. So let go. I want to take you to three scriptures and I'm going to read them in succession, but I'm going to give them to you first. Exodus 14, 14. Psalms 37, 7. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And we're going to read it in succession because it just lines up that way. And God gave it that way. I take no credit for this. This ain't my doing. This is God's doing. God lined it up that way. And then when I stood back and looked, I went, oh, that's the way God said. Oh, that's the way we're going to read it. Exodus 14, 14. Psalms 37, 7. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Here we go. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. In those three passages of scripture, he says, trust him, rest in him, and don't be afraid of when you see your neighbor, whether it would be co-worker, family member, whoever, prospering in the wickedness of which they accomplish, of which they do. Don't, don't fret because of that. Don't look at what they're doing. Just know this, and he says it in the end, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. You're going to understand how they get ahead because they cheat on their taxes. They lie. They steal. They rob. But they get to have this and they get to have that and and and, and look at their car, God, and look at their house, God, and look at the, the, okay. Okay. Keep looking. <sighs> Don't spend your time wasting it on looking at the enemy how he does or how he seem it, how he seemingly prospers. Don't, don't spend your time looking at that. Look at the value of what you gain in God. For what we gain in God, salvation is complete. What we gain in God prevails us over what the monetary gain the world is able to have. Because everything you can acquire in the world will burn will fade, has an expiration date. Your soul does not. You say, well, Bishop, how does that help me now with what I'm going through? As soon as you release it and let it go for real, stop playing. See, some of y'all tell me, me personally, Bishop, y'all tell me y'all done let it go. I let it go. I let God. But every time I turn around, you hear something happening in the atmosphere of what you quote unquote let go of and it disturbs you. Wait a minute. If you let it go, whatever you may hear is not going to bother you because you know God got it. So when you let it go, God says, all right, now watch what I do. Don't worry about what you see transpiring in the atmosphere. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about your enemies. Don't worry about all that. I got it. Trust me with all your heart. Don't lean to your understanding so you can put your hand back in what I'm doing and mess it all up. Don't do that. Trust me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge me so that you can correct, correct your ways. When your ways tend to tip in to what I'm doing, correct it. Say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I I rebuke the forethought to want to jump in and, and be the, the rescuer, the savior, the, the figure it out, the stop, stop. Be concerned with your relationship with God so that God may deliver you out of all of your trouble. We're so busy trying to cover everybody else and that time is up. What do you mean, Bishop? You're covering had a season, had an expiration date. Now God desires from us 
a personal relationship. Get to know me. And the only way you get to know God is to let go. Let go. Old folks used to say, let go and let God. We quote that all the time. But we just don't apply it. I'm so tired of people of God quoting scripture and not applying it. If you can't apply what you quote and shut your mouth, it's that simple. If you cannot apply what you quote and shut your mouth, because the unbeliever is going to see you quote what you say God is doing, what you say God is capable of, but they will see you fail in your interlinking of faith where you haven't linked your faith to what you said. And so then they look at the whole of relationship and go, well, God must not be that good of a God if, if, if this person. Stop doing damage to the unbeliever. Stop walking around here quoting stuff that you can't live by. <sighs> I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I don't lean to my understanding. Really? The unbeliever sitting back on. Let's watch. Oh, wait. Whoa. What is he doing? I thought he was trusting God. Why is he? Oh, God must not be able to do it. Let go. Every time you demonstrate your method, your plan, your figure it out, you reassume ownership of the very thing you say you let go of. And I'm sorry to tell you this, whenever you take over ownership of something, you're responsible for the outcome. Whether it would be good, bad, or indifferent. Imagine if God had retained ownership because you let go of it for real, what the outcome would be. People of God, let go. Let go. It's not an over-preached message. It's not a message that is being said too much. It's not over exaggerate. No, just let go. We are so busy holding on. We hold on to family members. We hold on to children. We hold on to things. We, we hold on to old desires. When you was 10, you, I've always wanted such a, stop, let it go. Let go. Let go of problems. Let go of desires. Let go. Well, Bishop, how am I supposed to, what you mean? Let go of my desires. Listen, if God desires for you greater than what you desire for yourself, why wouldn't you let it go? The problem is he hadn't shown you. So whereby you think your desires is the best you're going to get. Uh, people of God. God doesn't give his children trash. He gives us treasure. And it's not somebody else's trash they threw away. God bless you. We love you. We pray your strength in God and that you would be able to hear the word of the Lord concerning your life and your decisions. In Jesus' name, I strengthen you in the word of God. I strengthen you in the verses of God that you would stand before God and trust him. Let in go of all things that you've held on to and accomplishing the victories of God that he desires in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Join us Wednesday for the first chapter of Hosea. <clears throat> uh, after the book we finished of Daniel, now we're going into Hosea. And I look forward to what the word of the Lord is for us. Uh, so tune in Wednesday night, Bible study, 630. Fellow citizens of the household of God, God bless you. We love you and goodbye.